You know from the Watch Me First video that these demonstrations do not repeat the important details of the context and progress of Christian Smeda and his colleagues' project in Chapter 9. So we'll assume you've read that chapter, and I'll start with just a quick high-level refresher of the project by talking through the stages from the diagram on page 181. The first stage prepares the BASTA Civil Rights Database, and this involves formatting data in Microsoft Excel, importing it into MaxQDA, and reorganising data in readiness for the analysis. The master database includes data that wasn't relevant to the focus of the Community Food Systems team. So the second stage identified relevant data that Christian and his colleagues Lexa and Erin would use for this project. The third stage was the thematic analysis of that data, which involved an iterative process of summarising relevant segments and identifying themes, which represented dimensions of equity principles. The fourth stage finalised these dimensions, after which the team wrote up their findings. So now Christian begins with discussing the first phase. The first phase of the project took place outside of MaxQDA. We wanted to create a dataset that contains all results narratives for 2014 and 2015. At UW Cooperative Extension, educators write these narratives to communicate how they develop, execute, and evaluate educational programming. We collect between 600 and 800 of these results narratives every year. Many narratives include information on how our educators reached out to non-traditional and underserved audiences. Those are what we call access records. Now we wanted to create a data set that contained the results narratives with this access record information. Before import, all results narratives were in an Excel sheet and you can see this Excel sheet here on the screen. Since the information on underserved audiences was located in specific columns, we filtered out all narratives that had blank fields in these sections. That left us with the narratives that contained information on underserved and non-traditional audiences. I want to quickly point out the layout of this spreadsheet. You see here in um, the row number one, all kinds of um, shortcuts or names for those columns. Those were created based on the export that we had from the form that led to all this data. And the headers of these columns will become important in phase two and phase three. Before we move on to these phases, I want to point out that importing data into MaxQDA is fairly easy, but it's sometimes hard to know how the data will actually look like in the software. It's also tricky to conceptualize how data might be used throughout the analysis. You should expect to have to import data from spreadsheets multiple times. Review and test the workspace by analyzing small amounts of data and by checking in with others who will use the project file. That way you can iteratively optimize your workspace rather than sinking a lot of time into a messy and frustrating work environment. Most importantly, perhaps, take some notes on the import process. They may come in handy for the next project. In phase two, we created our analytic workspace in MaxQDA. We wanted to create a space that users throughout the organization can utilize quickly and easily. Our spreadsheet with the results narratives that you saw in the first video contained the data that we wanted to have in the record as codable data and some data that we wanted to use as document variables. This decision process is outlined in phase 2b in the book. So what did we do? Document variables can help to cross-cut through large data sets. We wanted to give users the ability to do this. That's why some data was imported as variables. For example, the targeted audience. Let me just pull up this really quick. So here you can see our different variables, our different document variables, and each one of them is attached to a specific document. 
But we're not only thinking of what we can do inside of the software, we're also thinking about optimizing workflows outside of MaxQDA at this point. Many of our users want to see the data on paper, not only on the screen in the software. We wanted to make sure that entire records could be printed with information that is relevant to our users. For example, who the author of the record is. Some data were imported as codable text and as variable to meet this strategic goal. So you see here in the document browser that we have a field that's called created by, and we see here the author of, the, um, of this document. And we also have this information as a variable. So you see here created by, we also have the author as a uh, variable so we can use them for uh, activation later. Um, having the author in here allows us to quickly print this and have that information easily available if the entire record needs to be printed. After the import, each record in a spreadsheet was recreated in MaxQDA. So you can see here the different records. And each of these records represents one of the rows in the spreadsheet that you saw in the video earlier. Since the column headers in the Excel sheets contained the questions for each section of the programming narrative, MaxQDA also coded each part of the narrative with the question that guided that section. You can see this here down in the code system. You can see here the different headers of the spreadsheet each of them corresponding with the data that you see in the document browser. 